Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to explain what BMW's Valvetronic system is used for and how it is put together. I will even take an unit apart and show you how it is done. Let's move on to the Valvetronic special. Valvetronic is a system that regulates the opening of the valves by controlling the lift. The camshaft will still be responsible for the correct timing of the valves. When the valves are barely opened, just enough air is allowed in the combustion chamber. Together with a minimum of fuel injected the combustion won't be that profound. Just enough to have the engine idling at the pre-designated number of revolutions. The other extreme is when the valves are open to the maximum lift. The engine can breathe freely and the maximum calculated dose of fuel is injected. This will give the biggest power stroke each individual cylinder can produce. In other words, the maximum power of the engine. This way BMW controls the throttle. Every setting between minimum and maximum power can be set within milliseconds. So, when you step on the accelerator you are not opening the butterfly flap in the throttle body but, you are regulating the lift of the valves. The throttle body is still there but will be wide open when the Valvetronic system is working as it should. There is failsafe mode when the Valvetronic won't work. Then the system switches over to the operation of the throttle body like we used to know. Let's take a look at an animation. At the marker you see the Valvetronics control unit. Having its own processors makes it a more or less standalone system. Of course it communicates with the engine electronics to work properly. Then, at the opposite side of this diagram is the stepper motor which takes care of the position of the intermediate shaft. The intermediate shaft will set the rockers to the required position to open the valves at the desired height when the lobe of the camshaft comes by. The red part is the housing or the frame if you like. Then at the end of the intermediate shaft is the position sensor. This gives feedback to the control unit about the position of the shaft. The oil line keeps all parts lubricated. The inner diameter is very small so when a problem occurs like in the engine I am rebuilding, it is recommended to change them for new ones. Yes, both. There is one at each side of the engine. Now, let's take a look at the animation again. Valvetronic is no mystery anymore. I like to thank Taunt and Greg for allowing me to use this animation. Check out his YouTube channel, the link is in the description. Let's take one apart. Or better, both Valvetronic units. Now you should be able to see which parts are what, I will point them out one more time. The housing or frame. The intermediate shaft. The rockers, there are eight of them because this engine has four valves per cylinder. And the position sensor. Before I put the unit back together I will give all the parts a good cleanup. After all, the unit has been in the engine that was clogged up with rests of liquid gasket. You just cannot imagine how happy I am having this parts washer. I do run biodegradable cold degreaser in it. This will not be any hazard to nature, so when I have to rinse some parts with tap water it will be just fine to do. After having cleaned these parts I will dry them off. I also will inspect all the fine oil channels that are in certain parts for blockage or gunk. Some parts are still brown. This is oil residue that really burned into the metal. When it dries it will even looks like the parts are rusted but that is not true. Because of the bearing journals I cannot use the scent blaster. And yes, like I expected there are pieces of liquid gasket in this unit as well. I really hope the P-Brain who worked on this engine only was trusted this one. Just imagine he did a few more and lost whatever foreign objects in it. Cleaning out the oil channels. 
they are dirty inside and I want to be absolutely sure there is no more gunk in it or stuff that does not belong there. Takes some more time but better safe than sorry. Everything that matters has been cleaned, dried and is ready to go back together. If you look at the intermedium shaft you will see it is using needle bearings. Be sure when those go wrong there is absolutely no chance of replacing them and you have to buy a new shaft. Cheap is something different, they are about $700. I put the camshaft in, the springs and bolted on the caps. These caps hold the camshaft and the intermediate shaft in place. I like to use light machine oil to pre-lubricate the bearings. Once the engine is back in the car I will start it without the fuse for the fuel pump in place, that way the engine can build up oil pressure without getting overstressed. Last thing to do is put back the lifters. They go under the springs which turned out to be quite stiff. This is a view from the other side, like it sits in the cylinder head. I am ready to start doing the other one. You have seen the first valve tronic unit so I won't bother you with the second one. It is not the longest video in the world but I do hope I made clear how the valve tronic in BMWs work. By the way. A Vano's unit is something else. It alters the timing of the camshaft and has nothing to do with the valve tronic. Thanks for watching. If you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you don't want to miss the next video hit the subscribe button. That will be most appreciated.